Hello, and thanks for stopping by the 741 channel today. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about an old radio, and in particular, the radio that got me started in the hobby. And that radio is this one right here, this old Night Kit Star Roamer. Now this radio used to belong to my dad. He bought this thing as a kit and assembled it somewhere around 1965 or 1966, a few years before I was even born. But uh, when I was a kid, uh, my dad had this in the kitchen, and he listened to it all the time. So I grew up listening to this radio. And of course, you know, being a curious kid, I eventually started playing around with it and uh, using it myself. And then when my dad passed away, I inherited it too. So the radio's a little bit dusty. It's been in storage for a while, but it still seems to work. You can hear a little bit of a hum in there, so... That tells me the capacitors are probably a little bit dried out. And that's to be expected since it's all the original parts in this radio. I think the tubes are even original unless my dad changed some when I was a kid and I don't know about it. But either way, I thought maybe we'd uh, tune around on it a little bit and see how it's working at this point in time. So before we get started with the tuning around, I'm just curious, what was your first radio? What got you into the hobby of radios or electronics? Was it something like this, or was it something a little more modern, or maybe even something a little bit older, or something completely different? Let me know down in the comments. I'd be interested to hear. So anyway, let's, uh, let's put the camera on the radio here and uh, see how she's doing. So before I get started with tuning around, let's talk about the radio a little bit first. Um, I'm not sure how many tubes are in this thing. I don't remember offhand. I'll have to look that up. Maybe I could look in there and count them, I suppose. But either way, suffice it to say, it's got tubes. It is a five-band radio. It starts down at 200 kilohertz, which is kind of unique. It goes way down into the long wave band and goes clear up to 30 megahertz. So down here, all the controls you can see, um, they're still dusty from being in storage. I didn't put a whole lot of effort into cleaning this radio up, but nevertheless, we've got a band spread control here. We've got an antenna control here, which helps tune the antenna to the receiver. Here's our band selector. We can choose any one of the five bands with this control. Standard volume control. Now, you may be able to tell in the video that this is sticking out a little bit further than it should be. I'm not exactly sure why that is, if this was replaced at one point or something like that, but either way, uh, this, this particular shaft is longer than the others, and I don't think it should be. Then we have a sensitivity control, and you may be able to hear there, it sort of clicks. And when it's in the clicked mode, so to speak, it's sort of in the normal position, and then we can turn it and sort of turn it up after it clicks. And I'll demonstrate that once we find something to listen to. Over here we have the tuning knob. As you can see, it still works pretty well. It's not binding up or anything. In fact, it's even weighted pretty nicely for uh, this type of radio, which would have been probably a pretty entry-level type radio back in its day. Up here we have the power switch on and off. We have an automatic volume control on or off. And we have an automatic noise limiter on and off. And a headphone jack. Oh, and I almost forgot, up here we have a signal meter. So let's turn the volume up and see what we can hear. I'm going to start off on the AM broadcast band and take it from there. So we'll tune up the band here a little bit just to see what we're picking up tonight. Uh, it's a nice cold night out there. I think it's about 5 degrees Fahrenheit. It's December 28th, 2017, so we're getting into winter now. And usually when the temperature goes down, the signals come up. So hopefully we'll hear some good stuff. Now, one thing to keep in mind, as we tune around, I'm going to need to remember to keep an eye on this antenna control to make sure I keep the antenna tuned in sync with the frequency, because as we start to go up the band, the signals will kind of fade down a bit, unless we uh, manipulate this control as well. Stephen has a question. Next, Stephen, you're on the Coach Cronin. Go ahead. 
Okay, you may be able to hear in the background there, there's a little bit of noise coming through underneath that signal. That's my plasma TV upstairs in the living room. That causes quite a bit of interference, especially on the broadcast band, but I think we can work through it. So you can see we've got up, up to about here, and the signals sound a little bit weak. We can just dial in that antenna control and bring everything right back up. Oh, a new donut shop opened. I could use a quick break. It can get really, really difficult up there for firefighters as well as obviously the people who have been displaced. They would tend to wins for the latest on this developing story. Back in a moment, Wins News Time 825. Is it Jan? Okay, so there's 1010 Winds, WNNZ, out of New York City. That's, I don't know, 70 or 80 miles southwest of here, and you can see it's, it's pegging the meter. That's really strong. It's over, in fact, it's overloading the receiver a little bit. You can hear it. I'm going to offset the antenna control a little bit. So that's pretty much it for a quick scan of the AM broadcast band. So what I'm going to do next is flip up to band 3, which is going to cover 1.8 megahertz up to about 5 megahertz. Keep in mind this radio is AM only. Uh, we'll be able to hear sideband signals, but we won't be able to tune into them. So now we're up here in the 160 meter ham band, and the television upstairs is off, so we shouldn't hear any of the noise from that anymore. So let's tune up here and see what we can hear. Here's a, sounds like AM ham operations here. And there's the famous Timtron. We caught him here on 160 meters. Usually he's on 80 or 75, but there he is on 160. A little weak, but we can hear him. Now the interesting thing about uh, hearing Timtron or WA1HLR is that when I was a kid, or maybe more like a teenager anyway, growing up in the 80s, mid to late 80s, my dad was listening to uh, Tim Tron and some of the other guys, W2VJZ out of New Jersey who's since passed away, and, and some of the other guys on this very radio in the kitchen. And that's what I grew up with, was listening to the AM ham guys talking. And uh, so it's kind of neat that we caught him while we're doing this band scan. So let's keep going, though, and see what else we can hear. Okay, so there's a little bit of local sideband activity. Again, this radio doesn't have a BFO or any way to receive sideband, so we're not going to really hear it, but there are some signals there. Let's keep going. And that should be CHU out of Canada. CHU Canada, coordinated universal time, two hours. 26 minutes. Okay, so now we're up in the CW portion of the 80 meter band. And again, we can't really receive the CW too well. We can kind of hear the carriers turning on and off. And we're getting a little bit of side tone effect just by virtue of them being so close to each other or some other interfering signal there. There's some sideband activity there. Not hearing anything on AM here tonight, though. Some kind of station there, a little too weak to hear. 
So we're up here around 5 megahertz at the top of band 3. Let's go up to band 4, see if we can hear anything up there. So we're getting a nice strong signal here, but we're getting some 60 cycle hum in there, probably from the lighting in here. There's something in the house, I'm sure. That's an interesting signal. I don't know if that's interference or something out there transmitting. So that's pretty much it up here at the top of the band, as one would expect this time of night. So I did a quick scan up through band 5 here, and I didn't hear a single thing up there. I thought maybe I'd hear a little bit up on the CB band, but I didn't hear even anything there. Um, that's kind of hit and miss. Sometimes you get a trucker going by on the interstate, which is, uh, I don't know, six or so miles away, but didn't even hear any of that. So the one band I didn't check yet was the low band, and I didn't check that before because the TV was on and I knew it would just kind of wipe everything out, but now that the TV is off, maybe we'll hear something up here, or down here rather, but I kind of think we probably won't. Okay, so what's interesting here is I'm getting <clears throat> an image from the AM broadcast band here, and I think this might be 1130 uh, WBBR. I think I caught their call letters just when I quick switched over to here just a second ago. So there's a little something there, but I think that might be some sort of an image as well. Yeah, a lot of noise, but nothing really usable here. As expected, that band is kind of dead. So that's probably a pretty good sampling of signals for the old Star Roamer here. It seems like it was working okay. Probably gives you guys a good snapshot of how this radio works, at least how it works for me, and how this particular radio is sort of getting on here. So that's pretty much going to wrap it up for the old Night Kit Star Roamer. Like I said earlier in the video, if you've got a story you want to share about your first radio or the radio that got you into the hobby of radios or electronics, uh, feel free to share it down in the comments below. Everybody's story is a little bit different and unique, and it's always interesting to hear how people got started with this. So anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. Thanks for watching.